One of my favorite things about being a bio artist is the reaction that I get from people when I tell them that I'm a bio artist. You're a bio what? What kind of ridiculous, made up career is that? And that was just my parents' reaction. <laughs> now, I've been calling myself a bio artist for a couple years now, and I'm still not exactly sure what we do, but one thing of which I am sure is that science is beautiful. In fact, I think science is so beautiful, I would go as far as to say that science is art. Not everybody agrees with this perspective of mine. There was this guy, he wrote, I don't know, a poem or two, you may have heard of his name, Edgar Allan Poe. Well, he wrote this poem called Sonnet to Science. And now here's where I'm going to ask for your forgiveness as I'm going to attempt to recite to you a few lines from this poem. So please bear with me. Science, why prayest thou thus upon the poet's heart? Vulture, whose wings are dull realities? How should he love thee, or how deem thee wise? Who wouldst not leave him in his wandering to look for treasure in the jeweled skies? So Poe wrote about science as though it's some vulture out to snatch everything that's beautiful and mysterious in the universe away from the musings of the artists and the poets. He talked about astronomy like it's a thief in the night stealing that valuable treasure out of the sky. Well, clearly, Poe never heard Carl Sagan talk about star stuff. Personally, I can't think of anything more beautiful, more poetic, more deeply moving and mysterious than the theory that every atom in my body, all of these atoms up here on stage that are working together to bring life to these cells and these thoughts to my brain and these words out of my mouth, all of these atoms were forged in the centers of ancient stars. Now, back when I was getting my undergraduate degree in biology, I fell head over heels in love with science. Every day's lecture brought new insights into all these complex systems that were at work in the world around me. The more I learned, the more enamored I became. I began to better understand and better appreciate my place among all these other particles floating around in space. And after I graduated, I got a job as a microbiologist at a pharmaceutical company, which was great, you know, for a while. And then after several years of the daily grind in the lab, I completely lost sight of everything that I loved about science. Microbiology became this monotonous train of all these tedious tasks, and I knew I needed to do something new, something that would get these cerebral fluids flowing around again. I've always loved art, and I've always loved photography, so I thought, well, I'll sign up for some community classes at the local art academy. So I did, and one thing led to another, and the next thing I know, I'm in graduate school, getting a master's degree in art. <laughs> Not exactly a practical decision, believe me, I am well aware. My mother's reaction was, you're going to get a master's degree in Art? Well, don't worry, son. I won't make any plans for your bedroom back home anytime soon. By the way, thank you, Mother. I appreciate that. I should be home in time for dinner tonight. <laughs> now, that first year of graduate school was so difficult. I really struggled to make artwork that actually meant something to me. Then there was one magical night. I was doing what graduate students do, and you know, they're trying to forget the fact that they're graduate students. I was binge watching Netflix. And they came across these old episodes of Cosmos with Carl Sagan. Five minutes into Sagan's intro, and I was reminded of everything that I love about science. Sagan's words reminded me that science is beautiful and poetic, and that science really is, in and of itself, art. And thus, I decided to make science my artistic medium of choice. Now, by combining my microbiology background and knowledge with my photographic studies, I was able to invent an entirely new photographic process, a process that I call bacteriography. And in bacteriography, I literally grow living photographs in petri dishes of bacteria. Now, generally at this point in the story, I get the reaction of, huh? You grow photographs in bacteria. And then people like to take a step or two back, as clearly I'm some weirdo who's covered in dangerous bacteria. And then they repeat, you grow photographs in bacteria. What, what does that even look like? Well, it looks like this. This is a photograph of Einstein growing in a petri dish of serratia. All right, so you have a basic idea of what it looks like. Let me give you a quick rundown of the process. First, I start with a basic digital photograph, like this iconic one here. Then, using some photo editing software, I turn it into a halftone. Halftone is just an image comprised of variously sized dots. But I use this halftone to make a very special negative. This is kind of hard to visualize, but you can think of it the same way you would think of a traditional film negative in darkroom photography. So once I have that negative created, I put that negative on top of a petri dish that I've covered with an even layer of bacteria and I put them together into an exposure unit that has a radiation source. So the, so, so the setup looks kind of like this. Radiation, negative, petri dish of bacteria. Then I turn on that radiation source, and this is what happens. The radiation comes, and it hits that negative. 
Now, remember, the negative contains the image that I want to grow in the bacteria. So where the radiation hits the negative and contains an image, the radiation is blocked and the bacteria survives. Where there is no image on the negative, the radiation goes straight through and it sterilizes the bacteria. So after exposing the plate to the radiation, I then put it in an incubator and I allow the bacteria that's left to grow. After approximately 48 hours or so after the bacteria has finished growing into the shape of the image, I take the plate out and I irradiate the entire thing, killing all of the bacteria that's left. Then over about a month or so, using different acrylics and resins, I can actually preserve these plates. Now this is important because this means the plates are safe to handle, safe to display, and most importantly, the bacteria is preserved, so the image won't change over time. Okay, so enough of me yapping about the process. Let's get some more eye candy. So this is a series of portraits that I grew for my graduate thesis. Now, I picked these subjects because they're figures that, to me, really blurred the line between art and science. The idea behind this work is that science and art are one and the same. They're both a means for us to investigate the universe around us in an attempt to better understand our place within that universe. Speaking of the universe, some more bacterial work I created using images taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, for these, I actually genetically modified E. coli using a plasmid of DNA for a green fluorescent protein. This makes them glow underneath the black light. Essentially, I wanted to create these little tiny living bacterial stars within petri dishes. Then I used my process and I grew images of galaxies and nebula out of these little tiny living stars. Now, in honor of Carl Sagan, I named this body of work Star Stuff. After all, it was Carl Sagan who reminded me of this deep passion that I hold for scientific study. And now, I want to create artwork that leads people to see that deep poetry that's woven into scientific theory. I want to create artwork that reinvigorates burnt out researchers. Ultimately, I want to create artwork that gets people excited about science. And that's why I was ecstatic to work on this project with some British celebrities and a nonprofit based out of the UK whose mission is to boost enrollment in the STEM subjects by throwing events that make science fun and make science interesting. Now, while we're talking about some work that I did in the UK, in case some of you out there are wondering what the Jolly O Queen might look like growing in bacteria, and come on, who isn't wondering that? There she is. <laughs> now, my involvement with the TED Med conference doesn't end with this talk. I actually grew some pieces specifically to display here. I have a couple images to show you. That's a piece called Frankly Speaking. Another one, Cubism is a Bore. And finally, I found myself so inspired by my fellow speakers that I grew this piece here. You might recognize some of those smiling faces. Now, this piece and all the rest are actually on display out in the hive, so if you want to see what bacteriography looks like in person, and, I mean, come on, of course you do, get on out of the hive and check it out. Thank you.